Welcome, my name is John Epps. I'm with the Texas A&M Transportation Institute at Texas A&M University. With me today is Dennis Berryhill, who is the statewide seal coat specialist for Texton operations. We're gonna be talking about brief number 20-03, asphalt binders and seal coat operations. This will give you a broad overview of the asphalt binders that are identified in item 300 of your specification book. This brief can be located on these two websites. These websites are available to TxDOT personnel and to contractor and other personnel that are available uh, through uh, these two addresses here. Uh, these briefs are recorded and uh, get available to you in that form and also the slide presentations that we're using to talk from are available on these websites as well. Today we're going to talk about a little bit about the importance of asphalt binders and give you some introductory to the asphalt binders and then we'll drill down into more detail on the three categories of asphalt binders. Asphalt binders themselves including asphalt cements, cutback asphalts, and emulsified asphalts. And Dennis will talk about the importance of asphalt binders. Thank you Dr. Epps. <clears throat> One of the important things to understand about asphalt binders is we have 72 different binders specified by TxDOT in our spec book. That's a lot of asphalt binders. So you need to understand the terminology that's used in each one of these to be able to communicate with your designers, with your inspectors, your contractors, and suppliers. These binders are used in maintenance and construction operations associated with seal coats. Pre-construction preparations could consist of patching materials, fog seals, and strip seals or spot seals. The actual construction of, of the seal coat and then maintenance of seal coats, which could include fog seals. We're gonna talk about the selections of, the, of these asphalt binders for the, that are preferred for each of these operations. All asphalt starts at a refinery or a terminal like you see pictured here. So what it, where do we get our asphalts? Asphalt comes from crude oil. Here in recent years, we've gotten pretty good at refining crude oil into our most valuable products, which is gasolines, kerosenes, and diesel fuels. What's left is our base asphalt, which is the bottom of the barrel. Since we've gotten so good at refining this, we have to add things back to this asphalt to get the, the properties that we're looking for, stiffness or softness. Three of the binders we're gonna be talking about, asphalt cements, cutback asphalts, and emulsified asphalts. Here it's expanded a little more. Asphalt cements, we have non-polymer modified ACs, we have polymer modified, and we also have performance graded. Cutback asphalts, we'll talk about rapid curing, medium curing, and special use cutbacks. When we get to emulsified asphalts, we will talk about antionic, specialty emulsions, and cationic. Here's a list from item 300 of the spec book, some of the acronyms that are used in these uh, asphalt designations. You need to be well aware of these and, and study them so you can communicate. So now we're gonna go back to Dr. Epps and he's gonna get a little more in depth on some of these uh, different asphalts. He's going to talk, first one he's going to talk about is asphalt cements. First of all, we're going to talk about asphalt cements, then we will move to cutback asphalts and then emulsified asphalts. These are broad categories of asphalt binders that are available to us for the various construction maintenance operations that we'll identify as we move through these particular presentations. In asphalt cements, these are, these are identified as viscosity graded with no polymer, viscosity graded with polymer, and performance graded. Below each of these designations, you see a wide variety of materials that are available to you. Under viscosity graded, you see those without any polymer, and they're graded from an AC 0.6 to an AC 10. As you get increased increases in numbers, the viscosity or stiffness of that binder is greater at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The polymer designations start out with AC for asphalt cement again, and then they have the letter P to indicate whether or not it has a polymer and the letters TR if they have tire rubber. The tire rubber materials you see are the two bottom ones under viscosity grade with polymers 
have also some other types of polymers besides tire rubber. Under performance graded, we have PGs, or performance graded, a very popular binder that's used for hot mix applications in Texas is a 7022 or a 7028. Uh, 6422 as you'll see used for a variety of uses as well. So let's take a look at the non-polymer viscosity graded asphalt cements. Hot mix cold laid patching materials are sometimes made with the products AC 0.6, 1.5, and 3 that you see here. And we often pre-coat seal coat materials with AC 5s and 10s depending upon what part of the state we're in. For asphalt cements that do contain polymer, these are primarily used for seal coat applications. And we will identify these materials for you in just a little bit here. The performance graded asphalts, again, are primarily used for hot mix, hot laid materials or our hot mix applications. Again, 70-22, 70-28, 64-22 are very popular forms of these materials. 6422's performance graded asphalt cements have also been used for pre-coated aggregates. And our tack coats are sometimes placed with asphalt cements as well. Some of the typical nomenclature for these materials, we use AC again for asphalt cements. The 15 talks about the minimum viscosity as measured at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And as I mentioned before, P is equal polymer modified. The AC20-5TR has uh, a viscosity of 20 at 140, actually 2,000 at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And it has 5% tire rubber in it and it does have some other types of polymer in these materials typically. The AC20-XP, again the P indicates polymer modified, AC for asphalt cement, the 20 indicates the viscosity, uh, the X indicates typically a little bit extra polymer in that particular material. Again, these materials are used for seal coat applications primarily. Very common materials that are used in this state in terms of quantity because of the hot mix, hot laid applications or hot mix asphalt pavement materials. PG stands for performance graded. The high temperature is the first number you see there. That's 70 degrees C or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. So this pavement should perform adequately up to that pavement temperature. The minus 22 is minus 22 degrees C or minus 7.6 Fahrenheit. So this pavement would be expected to perform down to that low pavement temperature without any significant performance issues. Cutback asphalts. We have three types of cutback asphalts, rapid curing, medium curing, and special cutback materials. Uh, the rapid curing materials are made with a gasoline or naphtha type of solvent. The medium curing materials are made with, made with jet fuels or kerosene types of solvents. And the special cutbacks are made with even a lower volatility material. Medium curing cures out slower than the rapid curing, and obviously gasoline will evaporate to the atmosphere faster than a jet fuel or kerosene will, and that gives us the curing conditions that we're after for certain applications. Here are the designations we have for rapid curing, medium curing, and special use asphalt. These are again cutback asphalts, and some of the uses of these are as follows. In seal coat emergency, at cold weather types of applications, we're sometimes using RC-800s and RC-3000s. And those are used, again, for emergency or cold weather. They're not a routine asphalt that's used for a chip seal applications. Prime coats, very common materials are used for primes or MC-30 and 250. They're fluid enough and they cure slow enough that allows them to penetrate into the base courses, so they're quite good materials for that. The MC-800 and MC-3000, cold mix, cold laid patching materials are sometimes made out of these, and an MC 2400L can also be used as a seal coat application in emergency or cool weather. As you increase the numbers from 30 to 250 to 800 to 3000, these binders are stiffer in terms of their viscosity at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see on this diagram, we add more cutter material, that is gasoline or naphtha for the RC materials, and a 30 grade material as compared to a 3000 grade material. So the gray portion of this slide indicates the amount of cutter material or naphtha kerosene kind of materials that might be in these. Typical nomenclature, RC250, RC stands for rapid curing, 250 for the viscosity of the cutback at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and the range is the 250, the lower end, plus twice that number, which takes you to 500. For the MC800, it ranges from 800, the designation on the material, 
twice that, or 1,600 uh, viscosity at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a number of emulsified asphalts that have been developed over the years for a variety of uses in construction and maintenance. And emulsified asphalts are blends of asphalt cements and water and a chemical or an emulsifying agent. And the emulsifying agent must be present in there because the asphalt will not mix with water, just like oil will not mix with water without some kind of a chemical. This chemical is like a soap, the soap that you use to wash dishes with to get grease off of pots and pans, etc. And it is an emulsifying agent. So the emulsified asphalts, we have anionic and cationic and we have specially use emulsions as well. We have non-polymer and polymer modified anionic and cationic emulsions as indicated on these slides. And then we have rapid setting, medium setting, and slow setting. We use the word setting for emulsions, whereas we use the word curing for cutback asphalts. So this gives you a broad look at the types of materials that are available that we'll go into a little bit more detail here. The emulsifying agent can have a negative charge on it or a positive charge on it. And the emulsifying agents, much like my fist and my finger that you see in front of you here, um, the finger part of this sticks into the asphalt cement. Uh, the fist part of this is the plus or negative charge on a chemical that allows these materials to be in suspension for some period of time. So we have anionic and cationic. If you put an anionic and cationic emulsion together, they will break immediately and you should not do that. We have a number of non-polymer modified anionic emulsions with a negative charge on the emulsifying agent, those being rapid setting, medium setting, and slow setting as we designated earlier. The HF stands for high float. H stands for a hard base asphalt. That is the asphalt binder from which the emulsion was made is harder than a companion grade. HFRS stands for high float rapid setting emulsion and there's a grade two indicated on this particular slide, and it's used for seal coats. An SS1H, so the H indicates are harder based asphalt, are sometimes used for tack coats, and they're also used for pre-coat seal coat aggregates in some applications. The anionic polymer modified materials, RS1P, HFRS2P, that is high float rapid setting, a grade two with some polymer in it as designated by the P. HFRS2Ps are quite common seal coat materials that we use in the state. And SS1Ps have been used for crack sealing materials as well. AES300P, AES300S, SS1P are other great designations that we see here. So here are non-polymer modified cationic emulsions. We have cationic rapid set. We use the letter C to designate cationic. And you notice that we did not have a letter designation in front of the RS when we used anionic. So we have CRS2, which is grade two of a cationic rapid setting emulsion. And the lower right hand, we have a cationic slow setting emulsion with a hard base asphalt, that is CSS-1H. CRS2Hs are used in seal coats and CRS2 are also used in seal coat applications, where CSS-1H is quite common for pre-coating materials and for tack coat applications as well. The polymer modified cationic emulsions, we have a variety of materials that are used here. CHFRS2P, that's a mouthful, cationic high float rapid setting with some polymer in there, grade two. Those are used for seal coats quite often. And CRS2Ps are pretty common for seal coat applications as well. Notice that we're using rapid setting emulsions for seal coats, not the medium sledding or the slow setting materials. There's a few other asphalt binders identified in item 300 of your specification book, those being recycling agents, asphalt rubber binders, and crack sealers. The recycling agents are used in hot mix, hot laid applications uh, to allow higher percentages of wrap in those particular mixes. They're also used by some maintenance forces to help develop patching materials out of old wrap stockpiles and that can be in an emulsified form as well as indicated on this slide. The type two and type three asphalt rubber binders are primarily used in seal coat applications and some hot mix applications as well. And then you see a variety of crack sealers that are made with polymers and asphalt rubber materials. We wanna summarize now some of the uses of these asphalt binders and Dennis will finish up with a summary of the uses of asphalt binders and close out this program. Thank you, Dr. Epps. 
If you notice here in this slide, uh, we use asphalt binders in, in a lot of different steps of our construction process. And our subgrade, uh, we can use uh, asphalt binders as, as a prime coat. Uh, and our, our flex bases, uh, we also can use those uh, as a prime coat and a surface treatment, uh, possibly even a two-core surface treatment. Uh, for our, in our hot mix uh, asphalt, of course, we use asphalt binders. But we also uh, use a tack coat prior to placing this layer of asphalt and, and as, as well as for seal coat applications. This chart comes out of item 300 of your spec book and, and it gives you some applications and some typical materials used. Uh, let's just take a few examples. Uh, prime coats, uh, some of the typical materials is MC30 or an MC250. Uh, for seal coats, uh, you have a variety of choices here, uh, AC15P, AC20XP, AC25TR, and then the second line there, there's several emulsions that can be used. Um, usually, in-house seal coats are primarily all uh, emulsified asphalts. Contracted seal coats could be either one. Some of the other things uh, we look down for pre-coating of aggregate, you see there's a, li a list there as well, AC5, AC10, PG6422, uh, SS1H, and CSS1H. So we'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hopefully we've given you some tools to help improve the quality of your seal coat program in your district. Once again, I want to thank you, and please be safe.